All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is uh, the first part of your chapter six. Uh, we're looking at linear functions now, or linear equations, okay? We're looking at graphs of lines. Chapter five, we looked at a bunch of different lines. We interpreted graphs. We looked at uh, what we call the rate of change, okay? Now, um, we ended up calling that rate of change actually uh, a slope. Some of them call it a gradient. We call it the steepness of a hill. Um, there are a lot of different words to describe how angled something is, right? If it's going up, we got that it's increasing, or if it's going down, we're going uphill, downhill, right? So we're looking at um, different types of angled slopes. We looked at them in chapter one, call them the angle of inclination, angle of declination, or, or, or depression, angle of elevation, right? Um, this idea of going from one point to another right, is pretty crucial. We break it down to the X and Y components, right? We got the Y here, we got the X here. That could be like your change in X, that could be your change in Y, right? That's how we get the slope. We used to look at these angles in here, look at the ratio between the rise and the run, which is also what we call slope. This is all coming together in this chapter here, okay? And uh, basically what we've looked at so far is that the slope of a line is we use M to represent slope, okay? And it's the measure of a steepness of a line. We've looked at delta Y over delta X, more math, uh, more sort of uh, science-based, okay? Chemical reactions or um, in physics, you're talking about change in masses, you're talking about change in time, change in accelerations, change in velocities, change in temperatures, um, change in lots of different things, right? Change in position even. Um, in math, we call it rise over run, which is sort of a more... Uh, descriptive definition of slope we rise vertically and we run horizontally right so the rise is your y and the run is your x and then we have a mathematical formula to show us how to find the slope between two points uh, one point being x1 y1 and another point being x2 y2 Right? We'll look at all these different situations very shortly. So first of all, what we need to be able to do is find the slope of a line. Okay. So what we're going to look at here is a graph. See if you can have a look at this line and see if you can identify the slope of these lines A, B, and C. Okay. Uh, let me just zoom it in here for you and then I'll do it in a sec. Okay, the slope of these lines. So what you can do is you can take any two points that you have. I'm going to go from here to here. Right? Or you can go this way if you want. Rise over run. So you can see that for A, it's 2 over 2 or 1. It has a slope of 1. Okay, so for A, your slope is 1. How about for B? You pick any two points, try and find something. So for B, right? I went down one, two, three, four. So minus four over two gives you negative two. So your slope for this line is negative two. You could have gone down two and over one gives you the same thing, negative two, right? Try C. A rise of two and a run of three. So for C, your slope would be negative two-thirds. Oh, that was a quick uh, zoom in there. Uh, let me do a little bit, zoom out a little bit more. Or in a bit, uh, I guess it's not going to do it anymore. Anyways, so that's finding the slope of a line, okay? Hopefully that part uh, makes a little bit of sense to you. We will look at a couple other questions here for sure. So draw a line with a given slope. Draw a line with a given slope. So say I gave you here, let's look at this graph here. Say I gave you a slope of negative three quarters. Can you draw a line that has a slope of negative three quarters? Well, if uh, you wanted to do that, one of the first questions you'd probably ask me is, where do I start? Well, if I'm just looking for a line that has a slope of negative three over four, you can start anywhere. Pick a point. Boom. There you go. Negative 3 over 4 means you go down 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Now, with negative slopes, what we often have an issue here is, uh, is this the same as 3 over negative 4, or is it the same as negative 3 over negative 4? Where do you put the negative, right? Now, hopefully you understand that it can't be this one, because a minus over minus is a plus, and a minus y direction is down, and a minus 
x direction is to the left. So you'd end up having a positive slope because a minus over a minus is a positive. But what I'd like to show you is that it doesn't really matter which one you do here. This means that you go down 3 and then right 4. This means that you go up 3 and then back 4. And notice that you end up in the same place, so it doesn't really matter which one you do. But I would suggest always going down and then for a negative slope, but always going to the right x, y. Okay, so that would be drawing a line with a given slope. The next thing would be to find the slope between two points. Now, that might not be so difficult to do if it was on a graph. So let's look at a graph now again. Let's turn this sheet over and let's look at a graph. So if I have two points here, let me zoom in for you again. Boom, boom, boom. If I have two points, say here and here, that hopefully shouldn't be too difficult to find the slope because what you do is you simply break it down into your delta y over your delta x. And you can see that you rose three and then you run one, two, three, four, five, six. You rose six. So that's going to reduce to one half and that's the slope of that line between those two points. Let's try a different one. Say I went from uh, here to here, okay? Here to here. Now, my delta y would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since I went down, it's negative 5. And then I go right 3. So my slope is negative 5 thirds. Okay? That is relatively easy when you look at the graph. The problem will be, sometimes, finding the slope between two points that are given to you. So say you have a point n at 5 and negative 3, and then you have a point M at negative 2 and 1. Now, you want to find out what the slope between those two points is. Now, you could plot them on an xy axis, right? You could plot them on here. Uh, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 3, and then negative 2 and 1. And you could absolutely find your slope that way. Okay, but what I'm hoping that you can try and do here as well is use the formula to help you find the slope. What you might not understand is what the x1, y1, x2, y2 refer to. Well, those just refer to point number one and point number two. If you want to call this point number one and call this point number two, I don't really care. It doesn't matter which one you call point one and which one you call point two. All you need to know is that um, if you call this point one, then that's x1 and that's y1. If you call this point 2, that's x2 and y2. So if you want to find the slope in this situation, you go y2 minus y1. So this is y2, y minus a minus 3. And you have to be very careful with your negatives here, okay? Notice that the numbers, I, the negatives I always put in brackets helps me realize that that's going to turn into 1 plus 3, which is 4. Now let's do the bottom. x2 minus x1. So minus 2 minus 5. Minus 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So I have a slope of negative 4 over 7. Now you can just write that as a negative 4 over 7. We don't usually need the negative on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. That would work no problem. How about trying to find then the slope, guys, between s, which is negative 7 and 4, and t, which is 3 and negative 2. See if you can find the slope for that real quick, okay? Pause the video, give it a shot. Find the slope between those two lines. Or between those two points. So I'm just plugging in these numbers. I numbered them 1 and 2. So this is y2, and that's y1. This is x2, and that's x1. I end up with the slope of negative 3 halves. Okay? Now, that is a good introduction to slope, you guys. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you quickly was interpreting slopes. 
Now this might get a little bit confusing for some of you, but we've dealt with this already. Interpreting slope, actually not really confusing. It's just a matter of looking at your graphs, okay? So what I wanted to show you was a couple graphs here, and let's see if we can interpret this. Okay, so look at Tom's wage, first of all. Tom's wage, how do we interpret the slope here? Well, we know that slope is equal to delta y over delta x. You have a lot of different points here, but what you have to understand is that you don't just have numbers associated with these values, they're also units, right? So your y is actually in dollars and your x is in hours. So if you look at your rate of change or your slope, it's actually dollars per hour. And most of you would recognize that as a wage. Okay, so interpreting this slope means understanding what it is that you're finding. What does the slope represent? What rate of change? And in this case, it's dollars per hour. Okay, now what is the slope? Well, that's when we find two points, right? And we find the difference between them. See if you can find the difference between them and figure out what Tom's wage is in this situation. You need to look at the scales, right? What's every tick worth? Now, if you had, gave it a few minutes to try that, hopefully you could see that this is a 10, so that's 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we went from 15 to 30. So your change in Y here is 15, and your change in uh, 15, and your change here is uh, 30 minutes, right? Oh no, sorry, one hour, one two. So that's two, so that's one. So 15 dollars per hour is what your rate of change here is. So 15 dollars per hour. That is your rate, right? That is your uh, wage. Sorry, I'm melting it back and forth here. I think I zoomed in a little bit too much. Let me back out just a little bit and uh, you guys can now see what I'm talking about. Okay. Now let's have a look at the next one. Mike's bike ride. Let's have a look and see if we can sort something out. Uh, notice that the lines change here. Something's happened, right? But let's see if we can find the uh, what the slope actually is here. So it's delta y over delta x. Delta y would be your distance, so kilometers uh, per hour. Hopefully you can see that that rate of change is time over, di or sorry, distance over time, which is actually speed, right? Now, see if you can find the speed of these three lines, or tell me, even interpret what's happening, right? And you'll see that you went 20 kilometers an hour here, so that's 20 kilometers in one hour for that first bit. This one there, we went 20 kilometers an hour, and here we went five kilometers in one hour. I think, anyways, hold on a sec, from 20, yeah, so in one hour, we went 10 clicks. And what about this last one, right? So from three hours to four hours, this one's going to be 10 kilometers an hour. So what this kind of shows us is how the slope uh, relates to our speed, right? The steeper slope, the faster you go. Shallower slope, slower you go. So not only is it kilometers per hour, but it also gives you an idea of how uh, fast you're going, relative speeds, okay? And that's basically what we're looking at here, folks, okay? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. One last thing that I want to just show you quickly is that uh, this is what we have as a positive slope, right, increasing, and this is a negative slope. Um, and the difference between steepness and shallowness. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. We will sort the rest out in class, hopefully.